Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivas. I am the Carb Addiction Doc, and I have both an MD and a PhD degree, which the MD part of me makes me, well, I've made myself a uh, metabolic health specialist. So I take care of patients who have metabolic disease or want to be metabolically healthy. We track them, we follow them, we manage them, and give you guidance as to how to adjust your diet so that you can be as healthy as you can possibly be. And as part of that, we do a ton of blood work. We do a lot of blood work, which allows me to read what your biochemistry is doing, how your body is responding, and how you can tweak your diet a little bit to optimize your health, your metabolic health. My PhD allows me to understand the biochemistry and the physiologic pathways. So in a previous video, uh, there are two parts to the previous video. Uh, ben Bickman, um, a professor of biochemistry, did a wonderful job explaining the biochemistry of uric acid which is a protein waste product, uh, amongst other things, fructose and protein waste. I then did, a, did my first part of this video looking at the clinical aspects and how I use uric acid levels, as well as your story of what you're eating and drinking, to be able to understand whether the uric acid levels are appropriate, whether they're too high, and if they're too high, are they primarily coming from fructose that you're eating, are they coming from any amino acids and protein that you're wasting? So that's the context clinically in which I can give you guidance about uric acid, which reflects on what you're eating as a dominant source of your diet. Now, in this video, we're going to, we're going to go one step further, and we're going to talk about protein. And I'm going to take this from the waste product backwards. So what we discussed, and what I want to reinforce in this video, is that there are three forms of energy that human beings use primarily. There are a few others, but the primary three forces are uh, sources of energy are carbohydrates, glucose, fructose, galactose, um, fats, ketones and, and, and fatty acids, and then protein. And protein in the form of amino acids. Now, all energy is trapped in three molecules, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, from all three of those sources. And carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in those sources, glucose, fatty acids, ketones, um, protein, amino acids, go through the tricarboxylic acid cycle or the Krebs cycle in the mitochondria and in a controlled way, they add energy to AMP, ADP and ATP. They release energy to these other holding molecules and they release the energy that is contained in the carbon, hydrogen, oxygen bonds. And as they go through that cycle, they uh, are released, the waste products of all three of these they all have a carbon, hydrogen, oxygen backbone. The waste product is carbon dioxide that we breathe out and water that we pee out. It's called respiration. That's how we manage energy. When specifically it comes to the turnover of protein, the turnover of protein, there's one other element. So protein has four major molecules, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. And out of the Krebs cycle, out of that tricarboxylic acid cycle, we re release ammonia, NH3. And other animals have different ways of dealing with that, either releasing it directly or releasing it as uric acid. We primarily turn that ammonia through the urea cycle, through the urea cycle, into urea. And urea is a soluble, stable form of ammonia. Ammonia can be very toxic. Are very, very toxic to the brain um, if it's in high concentrations. So we have to get rid of that ammonia very, very quickly. And if you've got cirrhosis, if you've got liver disease, ammonia, uh, hyperammonemia is a very big problem because a lot of brain confusion can actually kill you. So urea is a very, very important product and it's a byproduct of amino acid processing. Uh, and then urea can be measured as BUN, blood urea nitrogen, on your blood work, and we pee that out. So BUN tells us how much of your protein is being converted into energy. Hmm, okay. So we know what fraction uh, of your energy is coming from BUN. One of the cool things about uh, working with a company like HVMN, uh, who sells Ketone IQ, uh, is that I do get samples. And you know that I'm never ever, very, very few products, but I'm never going to represent something that isn't integral to my own way of life. However, I want to bring it to your attention. When you come in to see us as a patient and 
you think you've been thinking about using ketone IQ, you think it might benefit for you, you're not sure in what ways it might work, please bring that up with me during the consultation. Um, we will give you, we carry right here in the office, uh, HVMN has been very kind uh, giving us samples. So we have sample boxes of the ketone IQ. Uh, let's discuss that during your visit. And I'm happy to provide free samples for you to try. It may work, it may not work, but give us a shout. I certainly uh, use these in my own life on a regular basis for various indications. And they just give me that bump, that boost, uh, there may be a little bit of a placebo effect, I'm sure there is, but there's also a ketogenic effect that's measurable. Give me a shout, try it for yourself uh, without spending a penny, and then you can decide whether or not you want to incorporate that in your path to metabolic health. Now, through gluconeogenesis, some of that protein can be also made into sugar and stored as fat. So that's the other thing that can happen to protein, or well, proteins can be used... And, and transformed under the influence of insulin to other forms of protein. Amino acids become other forms of protein. But we're talking particularly about BUN, and I can read BUN to tell me what fraction of your energy, to high or too low, is coming from protein. And there's two reasons why BUN levels might be high. Either you're way overeating protein, you're eating more than your body can handle, and the only thing that the body can do is to store it as energy, turn it to glucose, turn it to fat. So we can look at, at uh, triglyceride production in the liver if you're not eating a lot of carbohydrates. It has to be coming from the conversion of protein primarily to triglycerides. And we can also look at your BUN. And if your BUN is elevated, you're converting excess amounts of protein to, uh, to energy. Or if you are energy deficient... If you are energy deficient, if you're in glucosis, where you are burning sugar, your cells preferentially use sugar, your insulin levels are still high, insulin blocks the mobilization of fat. If you're not eating a lot of fat, if you're eating lean protein, and you're not eating carbohydrates, which a lot of bodybuilders used to do, some still do, Arnold Schwarzenegger is one of those, then you're turning all of that protein into energy because your cells are demanding sugar. They're demanding that protein sugar uh, uh, gluconeogenic ride. And that also produces BUN. So you're either running at an energy deficit, which raises your BUN. And we can look at triglyceride count. We can look at a few other counts to look at that. Or you're running at a too much protein consumption, lean protein, and your body has to waste it and store it as energy, as either fat or burn it as BUN. So if your BUN is elevated, and depending on your body frame, depending on your body type, my ideal range for BUN is around 18 to 22. For some of my leaner people, especially the females, 16 to 18, 16 to 20. And for some of my more robust big bodybuilders, maybe 20, 22, 23. But once it gets higher than that, that's a concern. If it's significantly lower than that, we really want to look at whether or not your protein consumption is adequate. The other number I look at, I never look at numbers in isolation. I look at your BUN, but I also look at your uric acid. And the previous video, we discussed the fact that some amino acids are wasted as uric acid. So if your uric acid level is high and your, protein, uh, and your BUN is high, you're over-consuming lean protein. And that is not uncommon with our carnivores, so we have to scale back the amount of protein they're eating. Everyone says, oh, 0.8 gram. Nobody knows how much you should be taking in because you're a unique individual. So 0.8 grams per pound or point... I'm not Paul Saladino. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not Sean Baker. I don't know exactly how much I should take in, but if I look at my blood work, I can tell myself if I'm eating too much or too little and whether I'm eating too much or too little fat. And that's the advice you're going to get from me. Now, the third component of protein... Turnover, primarily from your muscles, is something, it's a waste product called creatinine. And we can look at your creatinine levels, and it's going to tell us either there's an overproduction of creatinine, or it might be related to kidney damage. But there are other ways to tell if you've got kidney damage. So if you don't have damaged kidneys, and you have an elevated creatinine level, it means one of two things. Either you're breaking too much muscle down, and there's this huge demand for energy, or you're a distance athlete or a power lifter or someone like that that's breaking all this creatine down, creatinine down, or you are consuming exogenous creatine. So please tell me if you're taking creatine as a supplement. Totally supportive of that. 
particularly if you're physically active, no problem with taking creatine. Kind of like it. I don't do it myself. But kind of like that idea for some people. But that will elevate your creatinine levels. Now, obviously, if you've got chronic renal failure, if you've got kidney damage, your creatinine level goes up. So creatinine comes from overproduction, over breakdown of your own muscles, or the levels go up if you're not peeing it out because it's all peed out in the urine. And I'm able to look at the variety of numbers to determine that. So the three protein numbers I look at, BUM, blood urea nitrogen, uric acid, and creatinine. And then I look at ancillary numbers, blood sugar, triglyceride numbers. I can look at energy distribution in the human body and see what your body is doing, where it's getting its energy from, and how much it's having to store because there's too much. And remember, if you are carnivore-based or primarily carnivore, you will never, ever, ever, ever under-eat protein. There's nothing on the carnivore diet that doesn't have an abundance of protein. But you will potentially under-eat fat, particularly in countries like this one, like America, where fat is bad for us and we eliminate all the fat from our diet. So we have to add fat in to protect the protein. But I can't give you a number like a 0.8 or a 0.9 or a 0.7 unless we know those. And I'm not going to do VO2 maxes and, and respiratory quotients to determine that breakdown. Because I can look at your blood work and give you guidance. But that's how protein works, folks. And let me have a look at my notes here and make sure I've covered all the territory. Because definitely that creatine is an important component of energy Creatine gets produced by the liver, but typically from protein because it's, it's done under the influence of glucagon. It's not done under the influence of insulin. So it's not part of your storage. It's done between meals where you need that energy. And it's breaking down your own muscles as a source of energy. So a lot of my lean mass hyper responders, my ultra lean patients, who are so fat adapted, they're not hungry, they eat once a day. That may not be in your best interest. You may be breaking your protein down. That may not be in your best interest. If you're not producing insulin, if you can't drive sugar into your cells where it's needed periodically or at least as a fraction of your energy, you may be breaking too much muscle down because your cell, cellular energy provision is the cornerstone to human metabolism. The only thing that matters to the human body or the primary thing that matters to the human body is energy supplied to your cells. And if the cells perceive an energy deficit. In other words, inside of the cells, there's not adequate energy to feed the mitochondria. Randall cycle, it might be fat, it might be uh, uh, glucose. But if there's not enough energy in the, in, in the, in, inside of cells, the cells, especially the brain cells, the brain is the central governor, it's going to send messages. Break my muscles down. I don't care where the devil you get it from. Get me some energy. Even if there's a lot of energy in your bloodstream. So your blood sugar could be this high and your cells could be starving. It's called insulin resistance or deficient insulin, type 1 diabetes or insulin suppression. Those cells are starving. You're going to be releasing fat. And we've got a video coming up on DKA, normal glycemic DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis or ketoacidosis, where the cells are starving and they need to get energy by any means. And that's where creatinine goes up. You break your own muscles down to feed your cells. So if you're a lean mass hyper responder, try to eat two or three times a day, but come and talk to me about how that works. Let's look at your blood work. So complex, so much to break down. And all we've got is flapping gums on the internet say, do this. You are not them. You are you. Let's figure out who you are and manage you better. That's what I do. If you're interested in the consult, if you want this breakdown, if you understand your own met metabolism, give me a shout. 561-517-0642. Set up a consult. We will get your blood work. We will analyze it and we'll figure out what's going on.